Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. Okay, so I got my drill. I have something which I'll show you. This is called a step bit. Um, you know, you see at uh, shows and stuff, well, it's not on this one, but People take some sort of hot uh, poker and burn holes in tubs. I mean, that releases toxic gas. It uh, doesn't necessarily make a pretty hole. Uh, and we all like pretty holes, right? <laughs> um, so this is called a step bit. This makes very nice, precise holes of varying sizes in one bit. So each one of these little steps are different size holes that you can make so what we'll do is that was basically two clicks one two and a little bit to clean it up and then we have nice, precise little holes. I'm sure they're not going to like my, my scent on this. But life is rough and you have to sort of get used to it. So we put the zip tie in one hole. And we thread it out theoretically through the other hole there we go then we make a little loop and what I'll do is my nice Viper Keeper knife uh, Midwest tongs uh, makes these they're awesome knives uh, believe me I've I've uh, perforated my finger on these serrations. It, they're very sharp. Um, very nice little tool uh, that I keep in my belt, uh, in my pant pocket with the, with the clip. I'm trying not to cut myself, of course. There we go. Right, close it up. It's a lock knife. That clip goes right in my pocket. Uh, where it's very handy. So, now that this is done, we can take and place this back in an appropriate place. Hmm, it's pointy end, huh? I'm gonna tickle your belly. You big bad water culvert, huh? Come on. See how nice and easy they are to handle now? Not the Cobra, they're never easy to handle. But you can pick it up, move it about. Oh, there's another one. Yeah. You want something else to eat? I gotta be careful with one above me. Want another thing to eat? Yeah. No, you want to go high. These guys are very, very shy. Now, so I don't butt hurt it and catch it in the doorway. I'll be very careful when I close it. He's very huffy and puffy. Oh, you're obstructing my progress here there, dude. Oh, there we go. So that's uh, how you make very lovely precise holes in plastics uh, with no sharp, real sharp edges that you can catch your finger on and no toxic gases produced and you zip tie the hide so it's easy to uh, to move about as needed. These are really nice examples of holes that Mrs. Viper Keeper and I made in the lids of these tubs. 
Uh, this one contains the young female Papuan Taipan, and this one is <laughs> extra secure than most tubs. It has many latches. It actually has a rubber seal in the inside, so it's really airtight and watertight, unlike other tubs. So we had to put some holes in it, and you can see how brilliantly the step bit uh, puts holes in the lid. Um, much better than a regular drill bit because a regular drill bit when you press it has a tendency to crack the plastic where the step bit does not and you can control the size of the holes precisely uh, so I just wanted to show you that uh, so you get the idea so in here is a very large Sahara Sand Viper uh, Serastes Vipera and oh, I think this is the tail end of her right there and the head is over here now this is a big female and she prefers to have the delivery man just leave it at the door and she'll eat it um, however these other characters are a little bit more interesting to watch and of course they will prove me wrong we see a uh, little sand viper right there, and yes, I've been feeding these every other week so they don't get too uh, too chubby. Um, that's a female, and now we'll uh, offer something to the male. You can see his little eyes uh, get narrower. Would you like something, huh? Oh, we would. And that's about the right size for you, huh, dude? Okay. I'll go back in there and enjoy. And how about you, huh? Me. Stuff to figure out. Ah, there's the eyes right there. You see, right there. Oh yes, <laughs> <laughs> the little landmines. Would you like this, huh? That's large. Let's try this one. Okay, it's gonna get shaken baked a little bit, but you're used to that, I bet, huh? Oh, there we go. So these are also known as Avicinia vipers. Uh, these are very interesting. They're very small, but they pack quite a wallop. Um, it's the only species that I know of that has a documented nephrotoxin, which goes right after your kidneys. And in the Middle East, they have an antivenin for these, even though they're so small, because a lot of times mm, the victims are kids playing out in the dunes, or you know, and especially in Israel. And uh, um, you know, the next thing you know, you've got one of these guys hanging off your toe, and uh, it's your typical viperid cocktail of of hemorrhagins and cytotoxins and, and as I said in this particular uh, uh, species uh, they have some nephrotoxins which uh, uh, cause renal failure so he's going into reverse so he can uh, uh, start eating uh, like many of these sand sand dwelling ambush predators their eyes are a little bit more set up on the top of their head so you uh, they can just have their eyes out just like you saw in the video and then snag anything that happens to go by I'm sure they they're they'll eat a variety of prey items uh, uh, certainly you know, small rodents, invertebrates like scorpions, uh, which are plentiful in that desert. Uh, um, they'll also, of course, take small birds if they happen by. 
Lizards for sure. So we'll let uh, let him go ahead and chow down and uh, enjoy his meal. Well, yeah, since I only feed them every other week. Well, usually um, after these Russell's Vipers, uh, who I haven't shown you in quite some time, they were born in August, uh, uh, feed, they make a disaster of their cage. And uh, that one's... <laughs> They're all very hungry because I've been feeding them very light, not trying to grow them fast. And the fact that they've sort of also will regurge if you overfeed them. Uh, so uh, what happens now is they need to be sort of uh, clean because as you can see, they make a disaster of their environment. Uh, so usually what happens, oh, no biting, I think it's probably still pretty hungry, is uh, we hook them out, put them in the bottom of the bucket, and then we clean uh, the cage in relative safety because there is no snake in there. You think that passes muster? Do you, do you want to switch to the taller ones? Yeah, actually that's a good idea because that's part of what makes the cages so nasty. Okay, so uh, what we'll do is we will replace the water dish uh, with, with some water. That is a uh, a fang that actually I harvested from uh, the Jeraka cage that I forgot that I put there and I'll just put there uh, for now. Um, so we'll switch. <laughs> they probably won't like this because they like that nice uh, flat dish because they curl up in it. Not yes. that there's any water in it, it's just that it makes them happy. <laughs> so um, now you can see the process and um, the remaining Russell's Vipers will all get the same treatment and we'll put water in a little later. Uh, just to show you the variety. And these are all born at the same time out of the same litter. Um, they, you know, some grow faster than others. Others just... Uh, uh, don't do so well. Actually, some of them are actually in the freezer because they really didn't do so well. Uh, actually, this one's clean enough that we just need to replace the water dish. And we'll put its very cranky uh, uh, butt back in there. Come on, no snake hockey. Elvis is watching. You're outgrowing that bin. Now, these are Pakistani Russell's Vipers, and their venom is highly toxic. Russell's Viper and Echis, despite what anyone has told you, kill more people on the planet than all the other venomous snakes put together. Uh, their venom composition is absolutely lethal to humans and also very lethal to rats. Uh, but uh, we would expect it to be. Um, they have a very bad disposition and bite with little or no provocation. There are four uh, groups of Russell's Vipers recognized, I believe. Uh, these are Pakistani. There's Indian, there is uh, Southeast Asia from Thailand, China, Taiwan, Burma, uh, and then there's an isolated group in, in the Indonesian archipelago um, that are distant relatives to the rest of these guys. and. 
they all have very, very toxic uh, venom that you do not want to get under your skin. They're also some of the most beautiful uh, snakes on the planet. Um, as most of the venomous snakes uh, usually are. Uh, they were highly sought after by collectors, not so much now. Um, a large portion of this brood uh, went to the Kentucky Reptile Zoo where Russell's Viper's venom is used in the medical test um, to determine whether you have lupus or not and how active that case of lupus is. So it's a very valuable venom that they uh, provide medical science. Um, so a large number of these animals went off to KRZ um, where they're going to uh, spend their life on the venom line uh, producing venom to be used in this uh, uh, medical uh, test. Okay, here's another one. Slightly different patterning, slightly different coloration. Uh, huh. But the same pattern of destruction in their in their uh, uh, bin. Just uh, needs a scraping and stuff. So I think that's enough on the Russell's vipers. Uh, uh, I'll show you some of the others that I have. There's a cute little guy. This male, a very interesting uh, character. Um, he doesn't like mice. The rest of them slam mice. He loves rat pinks. Now, rats are sort of their uh, natural food in India. Here's another one. This one is sort of in shed, as are some of the other ones. There you can see a, a selection. This one is just coming out of shed. And this one's coming up uh, to say hello. So all these guys are going to get cleaned. So now that you've seen them all, uh, I am going to put the camera down and uh, attend to this and uh, continue on the general tasks in the lair on this weekend.